This is the fourth episode of the Roundup. Please keep the comments classy. All right, I'm your host, Zachary Rooney Rector, here with Macaulay alum, Duke grad, former NFL player, Tom Bissell. How are you, Coach? Good, how are you doing, Zach? Doing well. All right, so we first just want to talk about a little bit about your NFL career. You know, a lot of people watching this probably want to go pro in something. What, what does it really take to be in that level? Uh, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work, and a lot of sac sacrifice made by a lot of people. You know, my family, uh, they sacrifice, I sacrifice. I mean, it, it takes a lot to, to be that successful. Can you describe a little bit of that NFL lifestyle, you know, traveling so much and, you know, getting to play with the best athletes, lots of lots of money? That part that part was good, yeah. There, there's a, but, but it's not as glamorized as you would think. Um, there, there are a lot of times, too, when you're getting, you know, I played with seven teams, so that means I got cut six times. Uh, so there are a lot of ups and downs, but you know when it's good, it's really good. When it's not so good, it is a little depressing at times. And that's what a lot of people don't see in that side of athletic um, teams. All right, so Peyton Manning retired last week. Yes. Made a lot of headlines. Had a great speech. Is Peyton Manning the greatest quarterback of all time? No. And Never. Who would you who would you put ahead of him? I don't even think he's the best of our generation. My generation, he did come out with me, so he is in my class. So I like the guy, um, but I don't think he's better than Tom Brady. You know, are you one of those? Are you one of those that you look at the rings and it's two to four, and that that's where you make your distinctions? Because when you look at Peyton's stats, he does hold the record for most yards in a season and in a career and touchdowns in a season and a career. Yeah, but he also played with a Hall of Fame receiver by the name of, what was the guy's name? Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison. Uh, you know, a lot of times Tom Brady is, yes, makeshift second, you know, second type receivers, you know, what we call it, um, not necessarily a primary or first receiver, but the second or third option, and he makes them into superstars. So, you know, he's always had, I think, more to work with than Tom has. I agree with that on the offensive side, but I do think that Peyton has not had I mean, Peyton, from 2006, I think 2011 with the Colts, didn't have a defense up in the top Because they were always loading it up for him. They always wanted him to be able to be successful on offense, so they were taking all their draft picks, all their money, and protecting him and getting him more weapons at his disposal. If, if Brady had the weapons Peyton had, how many rings would he have? If Brady had the weapons? Yes. He'd probably have six by now. And he has what, four? Yes. Yeah, four. But at the same time, he did have a Randy Moss. He has now a wrong. He had Randy up. Moss for a year, and that was in his twilight years. It's debatable, you know. I think well, I mean, Randy, you, Randy Moss. You, you asked me, and I, I, I do think he's a Hall of Famer. He's the first ballot Hall of Famer. He did revolutionize the game. But for my generation, my money, if I had to start a franchise and go back and choose between one of those two, I'm going with it. So if you have top Brady. four, do you have Brady one and then Montana two? No, I probably have Montana one, Brady two. LA three? No, for my taking, I'm going to have Brett, Brett Favre. Brett Favre. And then Peyton. Oh, yeah. All right, so now that, you know, we're in the South, you can always talk college football, you know. So let, let me get your over-under on Tennessee. If I put the over-under at ten and a half wins, you're going over-under. Ten and a half? Yes. Under. Under? Under. Only only road games are at UGA. And I think Texas. they may have ten wins next year. Nine or ten wins. So I have to go on. Okay. okay. What about Georgia? If I put the over under at nine and a half. Who's the new coach there? Kirby Smart. Former defensive coordinator. Foul. I don't know. I think Georgia's in for a rude awakening. I think they had a really good coach. They were really hard on them. You know, it's the SEC and everybody thinks they're supposed to be at the top. So I think they may have been a little premature parting ways with them and they may be in for a little bit tougher ride than they expect. I would agree. You don't fire a coach that gets you 10, ten wins. wins. Yeah. Averages 10 wins his career. Uh, if you're going to fire Mark Rick, you better hire a coach with some experience at that coach. Yeah. I would agree. We'll see though. Um, over under for Alabama, 12 and a half wins. How many games do they play? They, you, have, um, you have 12 games in a season, but you got to count for probably the SEC championship and national championship. So the over and under? 12 and a half. <laughs> you, you, 
Uh, I'm going to go under 12. They're going to have 12 wins, so I have to go under. All right. What about your alma mater, Duke? If I go over under at eight and a half wins. Oh, over. Over. Yeah, we're going to get nine or ten wins next year. What, what were they this year? I know David Cutcliffe. Uh, we may have been right? nine and four last year, something like that. David Cutcliffe, phenomenal coach. Great coach. Revolutionized that program back to the days of Steve Spurrier. Uh, yeah, all yeah. right. So, staying with college football, but going a little to politics. Urban Meyer just endorsed John Kasich, a uh, Republican nominee. My question is, if Nick Saban were to go out and to publicly endorse Hillary Clinton and say that if Hillary Clinton's not the nomination in Alabama, he will resign as head football coach in Alabama, do you think Hillary would get the nomination? For, 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 for Alabama. State of Alabama. For Alabama. Oh, yeah, most definitely. That would be the greatest thing for him to do. Yeah, so. and, and Hill, I mean, Alabama's a very red, conservative state. And they it would go never, blue. It would go blue that, know, that year if he said something like that. It would go blue. It, all right, so staying <laughs> on politics, I got four matchups. You got the four big candidates. I want your take on if these four matchups occurred in the general. All right, we got Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. Well, well, how would you see that going? That's what it looks like. It may boil down to. Um, oh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go with Hillary. Just because Trump is just too controversial right now, he's just too off. To, he's, I don't know, he's just a little bit too extreme for me, so yeah, I'm going to go with Hillary. Bernie versus Trump. I hope Bernie. You think? I mean, between the two, I, I just think I just think right now that, that Trump is dangerous for our, um, our society, for our country. And so, you know, I'm going to take anybody over him. You would think Hillary and Bernie would both get the minority votes, which... Exactly. And, and and Trump is splitting his own party, so you know, you would think that some of those guys would go the Democratic way as well. All right, Hillary Clinton versus Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz isn't as rash and, and controversial, but he is probably more conservative than Donald Trump. Uh I'm I'm gonna have to take I'm gonna take I'm gonna have to take Hillary over Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz as well. Okay, and then Bernie Bernie versus Cruz, would you stay with Bernie on that one? I'm going to stay with Bernie too, but I would tell you, the, the one, to me, the, um, what do you call it, the wild card is Kasich. If you had Kasich in there with any of those two, with, with Hillary or Bernie, then I think it's going to be, it would be a bigger, better matchup, and, and, and I wouldn't be able to tell you as, as profoundly which one I think would win. Because Kasich's more, you know, more moderate, a little bit more moderate, but he, he's more sensible. And so, you know, if you have two sensible candidates running for the presidency, it's hard for you to decide. When you have extremists running, I think it makes it a little bit easier. And he doesn't get into all the antics on the stage. Exactly. Like he, the he, he carries himself like a professional. All right. So, I take your class. We made, I made a statement one day. The craziest statement ever. In five to ten years, Fox Sports 1 will surpass ESPN. Tell me why you think that's so bananas and why you don't think that would ever happen. It all started with ESPN. We have ESPN on our phones. We get updates. I mean, I, I hear y'all in class all the time. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Come on, man. It's not even close. <laughs> but, but, I mean, there's a show on ESPN. Numbers never a lot. And we don't even know what the Fox uh, little musical thing sounds like. How do you identify Fox? That Fox, they don't even have a little whatever you call it. Ringtone? <laughs> what do you call it? Ringtone? What's, what's Fox's ringtone? They, they, I mean, I think you go with the NFL on Fox. The da -da 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 that's da -da -da -da. NFL. That that's not Fox. That, uh, that's Fox's. They have kind of other sports, right? Don't they have bad, what do they do for basketball? They can't go da -da 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 -da, right? What channel is Fox even on? Exactly. It depends on what you have. It's 337 for <laughs> TV. But I do think the rise of, you know, MMA... I don't know how much you follow UFC. I do. But Fox is very aggressive in taking UFC. I think Fox is more of a maybe an adult channel because they do handle a lot. Of well, they better. They take a lot of boxing matches too. They take a lot of the stuff that ESPN doesn't take because everybody wants to go to ESPN first, right? Yeah, I mean it's just like that. I, I mean I hate it for you. Maybe when you become producer of Fox or you're working there one day, then no numbers will already be up there. I can just maintain. All right, there you go. All right, so 
It's March Madness. It's time. So, you, I mean, you saw you saw the bracket released. Uh, Duke got number four seed. How do you see? How do you see March Madness going? Who, who, do, who do you like? It's a rough year for me, just because I know we're probably not even in the in the debate. Um, I am like liking two SEC. I mean, two ACC schools. So I'm liking Virginia and I'm liking North Carolina. I think uh, Carolina probably has the most talent, but they're inconsistent. And they go as far as Paige is going to take them because, you know, uh, what's the name? Johnson is going to show Bryce Johnson is going to show up to play. And they have a lot of pieces. But Marcus Page has to be on fire for them to win it, I think. Um, and then uh, I, I like Virginia. They have a lot of uh, character. They have a lot of uh, experience. So I'm, I'm liking Virginia. Um, but it's up for grabs this year. There's really no dominant team. Any team can get hot, hit that streak, and go on the run. Um, you know, you got Oklahoma out there. Uh, who else? Uh, Kansas, of course. My, my brother really, my, my youngest brother thinks that Kansas is going to win it all. I, I beg to differ, but we'll see. It's, it's, it's going to be pretty entertaining this year. Well, how, how do you see UTC then going against Indiana in the first round? Do you think, you know, you think they got a shot? Unfortunately, they'll be home. Watching the second the second round with us, but but I hope they, they they show well and at least make it tight and don't get blown out. Thoughts on UConn, who always plays well when it matters. UConn, yeah, I mean, I I recognize them this weekend. They I mean they they caught fire. They're playing well. They're you know their coach does a good job just having them t tournament ready. I mean that's what you do in basketball. You're building towards the end of the year because all that other stuff is what you, it really doesn't matter until the end of the year. And um, so I think that they're going to be a formidable, formidable opponent. But I, you know, after they'll probably make it to the Sweet Sixteen. But then after that, round. yeah, after that, 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 that it's going to be kind of rough. Is it second round or third? They're not seeing Kansas is along the top. Okay. So they have right. Tough second round. And to look out for Daniel Hamilton, beast. For Can I mean for uh, UConn. UConn. Well, I don't know about them going past Kansas. I thought Kansas was their Sweet Sixteen matchup. So. Do you like so? Do you do you like UNC getting out of like the blue blood? I would say regional when you got Indiana and you got Kentucky and then you got UNC all can play in consecutive games. Well, I mean, I think Kentucky's a little down this year. Um, uh, Indiana, Indiana has a tough matchup. What second round? But it's Kentucky. Oh, it's Indiana and Kentucky. Yeah. So I think you know that's going to be a knockdown drag out, and then the next game, you know, that next game is probably knock whoever wins that one out. I don't know if you saw it on ESPN, but Cal Perry came on, and it was just after the bracket had been released. And earlier that day, a and and Kentucky had played, and Kentucky beat them in overtime. But a and ran it on the three three line, and Kentucky got a four seed. What, it, what I mean, do you think that do you think the SEC should move their championship game to Saturday? Because it almost looks like. They already playing. determined. Yeah, it was already determined. Well, a season. lot of times they go off of you know what you did, your your um, your body of work during the year, and A and M was finished a little stronger than Kentucky, during, didn't they during the during the regular they, season? They and so, going on the body, of course you can get a team tournament ready like UConn. They were tournament ready. That doesn't necessarily mean that they were a stronger team than anybody else in that AAU conference. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I think you have to do it like that, you know. And, it stinks that a team ends up winning their conference championship and then they get a lower seed. But, you know, if you look at the body of work, I think A&M had a better year. Do you, uh, so who is your team? If you're putting money right now on one team, who, who would you put it on? If I had to put money on it, and it's not Duke, right? You know, yeah, it's I, not Duke. If I like Duke to be strong, and then I, I put my money on Duke. But if it's not Duke, I would, if I were a betting man, I'd put my money on Carolina this year. Yeah. All right, so we're, we'll take a few questions from the audience. Anybody want to ask? There there's really one about the UConn women. UConn uh, women, are they the most dominant prog program in sports? Yes, right now, yes. Uh, Tennessee, you remember not too long ago, Tennessee was that dominant. But right now, yes, they are the most dominant. Do uh, well, well, or you can go Alabama too. You can make an arguably Alabama in football, but yeah, these girls are pretty dominant. Do you think that's good or bad for college basketball? Because good, because if not, nobody cares, right? Uh, you know, it's good to have a, a, a villain for everybody to try to knock off. Um, and I think it makes all the rest of the, you know, South Carolina's 
getting better. Notre Dame's always right there knocking on the door. Tennessee's kind of falling back a little bit, but hopefully they'll they'll get a rebirth there and, and hit their uh, their form. But hey, you got to knock knock the big man off, knock the giant off. I mean, it, if it's good for football, it has to be good for bas girls basketball or women's basketball too. Harrison, you have a question. What do you think about the Warriors getting the 60 wins, the fastest ever? That's amazing, especially the style of ball that they play. You know, uh, you, I remember uh, a couple years ago um, with Charles Barkley. You know, I, I always watched TNT, and he's always saying, "You can't win a championship shooting jump shots, right?" And boom, here we go. Nothing but jump shots. They're raining threes, and they're winning games. And they 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 may walk out of there having the best record in the history of the NBA shooting the three ball. They're I mean, sixteen and six right now. They're revolutionizing the game. Everybody's trying to play small ball now. I mean, trying to match them, you know, tit for tat. Of course, I'm a Cleveland Cavalier and LeBron James fan, so it looks kind of dreary for me this year because we're going to get to the championship and LeBron's going to lose again to Golden State. But you, have to, you have to commend them for what they're doing. Do you think that the Warriors will pass 72-10 and get the 73 all-time record? I hope not, because I was a Jordan fan, but I do think that it's, it's leaning that way. I mean, what, they went, they won the first, what, 22 games, something like that? Their first 20-something games. They can stuff that 20 times off in this. Season. And it's only, what, 19 or 20 left now. Yeah. So, yeah, who's to say that they're going to lose? What do they have to leave, lose now, four games in 20? Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen, right? Do you think that they would beat, like, the 90, or middle 95, 96 bulls. Nope. Michael Jordan's on that thing. Seven game seven game series, what, what would it be? It could be four three, but I'm telling you, Jordan's coming up on coming out on top. You've never seen the competitor that he is. I mean, Kobe, Kobe was close, but you've never seen a competitor quite like MJ. Kobe, yeah, Kobe definitely had that inning. Is there any other questions? All right, so we will end the fourth episode of the roundup. I want to thank um, Coach Tawani Settles for coming in, and see you next time. Thanks for having me.